Right, we're going to uh, finish our little um, Venetian mode painting uh, here in the next few minutes. It's uh, not a long process. It's almost magical from here. All the hard work's been done with the underpainting or the grisé, which is, you know, the black and white painting that we produced last session. And uh, this is a little bit arbitrary, uh, okay, but I'm thinking that I'm going to use green in this apple and I'll use uh, yellow and the pear in the foreground and red in the apple behind it. Um, and this will not require very much paint uh, because we're glazing, we'll be using an acrylic medium, so very little paint. Uh, it's green. I'm going to put out a little yellow ochre. Put out way more than I intended to, but there it is. In um, your painting kit, uh, you have a small bottle that has blue tape over it, and that's because the bottle leaks. Okay, so when you open that up and put out a little medium, put the blue tape back over it. Um, I ran out of bottles as I you know, produce those things for you, and so my acrylic medium is in this little water container. And it's a milky light substance, uh, so we're pouring a little bit of that milky light substance out onto the palette. This is actually the stuff that the pigments are ground into. So this is the medium itself. You know, when you refer to acrylic medium, this is acrylic polymer. Um, so we have those things, those things out. I'm going to uh, use the medium size um, flat brush for this because I have to be able to control edges again. And the brush has been rinsed, but it's going to be dry. All right, it's a dry brush. And we'll go into this green, and I am going to warm it up a little bit with just a little bit of the yellow ochre so that it gets a little warm. And then into the acrylic polymer. What we're looking for is a semi-transparent wash, but not necessarily a wash in this case, it's a glaze in this case because we're using the acrylic medium in it, so you should be able to see through that. All right, semi transparent. And then it is simply painting over the entire surface of the apple. And you should be able to see through what you're painting to what is already there underneath. All right? So all of your highlights and all of your shadows and everything are already in this piece of fruit as we paint in. And you can paint right over the top of everything. It's just practically house painting at this point. And as you can see here, we have our shadows are already built in, our middle tones are already built in, and our higher lights are already built in. Try to get rid of a few of these brush strokes I'm leaving in here, so hitting it a little more softly now so that I'm not leaving so many strokes in it. All right, that's it for the moment. Without rinsing the brush, drying the brush.
And then I'm going to uh, move to the pair and uh, more medium, semi-transparent, well very transparent, sorry. And we'll paint in the pair. Accidentally hit a little green there, so I don't think it'll matter with this. It could go a little green. over everything. I can maybe be a little stronger with this. transparent over here but I don't want to uh, kill the shadows that I have in here I want them to remain in this painting I want my highlights to remain in the painting a um, transparent wash over the top of this transparent glaze yes close to the Sierra uh, because I want to uh, the reds a little bit cold I want to warm it up some so I'm going to add a little bit of Sienna to it so that it's not quite a real cold red. And I'm going to need a little more medium out because, you know, I've messed all that up over there, so. A little more medium. So we get a transparent glaze. And we'll paint in this apple in the background. It is best to err on the side of it being too transparent initially. That's a little too too transparent. So uh, I'm going to stiffen it a little bit, a little bit more pigment. You can keep building with this and you know adding more pigment but it's difficult to pull it back out so uh you know air on the side of being a little too transparent as opposed to not being transparent there all right you pretty much finished the fruit to uh, get something 
mixed up here for uh, shadows in the drapery and um, I'm going to build a purple out of sort of an earthy purple I'm going to build it out of blue and burnt sienna <clears throat> spurt sienna is kind of an orange and so it should give me um, a nice purple, I think. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, just move a little blue aside here and we'll let it be on the blue side. So there's more blue than purple in this. And that should give me um, a very, very warm purplish blue. I can probably pick up a little medium from over here. I still have it over here, so and we'll see what we have here. Not bad at all. Semi-transparent again. And um, you don't have to be terribly careful with this, but we've got some areas that we want to tint. You do have to tip, go over some of the shadows that we've already put in. And then you can allow it to fall out of those areas if you want. So, You don't have to remain right, right on top of, um, you know, overpainting a little out here. Shadows right in here. So we're tinting our shadow that we already have placed in here with semi with this transparent shadow color. Sienna, sorry. And we're over here some. I'm going to need a little bit more medium up there, so I'm putting a little more medium out. It's very transparent, but enough to tint this towards a earthy looking blue purple. to escape some of these uh, initial shadow areas in here, place or two, for lighter shadows in the drapery. And you know, you could, um, you can play around with that a little bit. You don't have to stay just in those areas up there. We could put a little in there, we could in here with this really, really light stuff.
Okay. I'm going to uh, introduce uh, some black to the palette. And touch more medium. I'm going to stay with this square brush for this. Uh, you might want to move to a point, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. And uh, we're going to begin dealing with these stripes that are in our drapery. Um, I don't think that I'm going to use the one, two, three, you know, the fine one, the thick one, and the fine one. You can do that if you want. Um, but I think it'll work out just fine to. Uh, Use a uh, transparent black. So we got a transparent black here. And we're just going to roll these things in. Okay, we'll let them kind of roll. And, you know, if uh, they roll some as you're going across the picture plane you'll give a sense of the drapery rolling so that's what we're looking for roll up and back down maybe up again maybe back down And there's quite a few of these, so we'll put a few of them in here. Up and down, you know, rolling. If they're rolling, you'll start to give a sense of the drapery, you know, creating folds. So, you know, don't run them straight across the picture plane. Um, you know, how you roll them I won't make that much difference, but uh, as long as you do roll them some. So that's kind of our indicator for the fact that the drapery is rolling and has, you know, curls and hills and valleys in it. That's just sort of magic here. I mean, because we had the painting pretty well finished before we started this glazing process. This is just sort of coloration in a way. I'm going to uh, add just a little bit of white to my palette.
little bit of white on the palette. And um, then I'm going to hit a little higher highlight. Over here with uh, this piece of fruit, I'm just going to highlight a little in there. It's, there's some pretty strong light right up in there, so we'll hit a little highlight there and we'll hit a little highlight there. Could maybe be stronger. or two over here in the pair and for that we'll be going to uh, white with a touch of yellow ochre in it almost no yellow ochre in it it's going to be almost pure white not quite pure white and we've got a very strong highlight right in there another one right up in here Seems like it's maybe picking up a little more light right there. Finally, we'll go over to the apple and pick up some highlights. So it's almost white, but a little bit of red in it. Start picking up a lot of light, so okay. Uh, stems we already have the dark side of these stems in, we're going to put in the highlighted part of the stems, and for that, I think I would just go with a little bit of yellow ochre and some white. So we're only hitting the highlighted part of them. If you want to switch over to the point brush at this, for this, go ahead. I'm kind of tamping this in with the end of the. And that takes care of our stems for this. Okay. With this background, if you want to change it a little bit, um, you could. Uh, might make sense to. Um, I'm going into some burnt sienna for it, and it's semi-transparent, and. You don't have to paint this in flatly. You could give it a little design back here if you want to. Um, in fact, you could shift around back there some if you wanted. You could have some greens in it and some burnt siennas and maybe just give it a little more interest in the background. Could have blues in it if you want to. I wouldn't get into this thing too, uh, I wouldn't make it too active because you will draw attention away from the foreground if, it, if the background is too active, but you yeah, know, it could be more active than just that deep, dark ground that we gave it originally. I'm kind of liking the way this blue with a slight, I'm still using that gray down blue, slight bit of white in it. I'm kind of liking the way that looks back there, so I'll use a little bit more of that. Yeah, and then um, it would just be a little bit of tinkering that you would want to do. Don't use any uh, solid color in it. Always use semi-transparent. But if uh, 
you're thinking, well, you know, maybe this uh, could have been more shadowy right in here or something like that, you know, any little tinkering bit that you want to do to it now, or maybe you killed too much of the white in the drapery and you want to go back in and add some highlights back into it, you could do that. lost a little of the drama of the drapery back in here, but that's good. We can add it back in, a little bit of white. And that is our uh, little uh, Venetian mode uh, work. into these stripes, black and white grays. Maybe this is unnecessary. I might be over tinkering. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, the painting was pretty good, as it was. <laughs> somewhere you don't have to give credit to anyone on this one because it was mine so good this glazing process can be used in other paintings if you were working on a painting at some point and and you wanted to darken something or lighten something up um, you can do that by glazing and and hang on to some of the stuff that you already have in the painting um, so you know you might want to think about that as you go forward with your own paintings etc but I think that worked out pretty well <laughs> 